Distributed computing is a very broad uh, field which encompasses uh, many different uh, areas. This is Maurice Early, a professor at Brown University who visited the PFL a few weeks ago. Early is one of the world leading experts in distributed computing. A lot of the work uh, that I've done has to do with questions of uh, consensus and synchronization. And the same issues arise in many different scales. Sometimes you're concerned with distributed computing, where the uh, players are physically in different places. And sometimes we're interested in concurrent computing, where we have a number of processors that uh, share a uh, data structure in, um, in memory. And even though the physical scale of these systems is very different, many of the mathematical and engineering principles are the same. These days, with the advent of the Internet and the upcoming Internet of Things, distributed computing has become a central problem on large scales. Amusingly enough, it has also become central on microscopic scales as the speed of microchip processors have reached the limit and CPU developers now rather propose multi-core processors, that is, chips that are made of several processing units. In all such cases, computing is done in parallel on several machines and their concurrent computations need to be coordinated. This coordination of machines poses many challenges. Well, one of the primary difficulties is that you have to make decisions based on partial information. In a distributed or concurrent system, uh, no individual party has a completely accurate view of the global state. Instead, everyone sees only part of what's happening and it's necessary to make decisions based on partial information that are compatible with all possible global states. And one particular problem that this poses is that some machine may have to wait for the answer of another machine to start its computation. But this other computation may have crashed, and there may be no way to determine whether that is the case or not, except waiting. This problem is particularly salient in the case of asynchrony. Asynchrony is central to uh, many different aspects of uh, distributed uh, computing. The idea there is that it's really impossible for all of the participants to remain completely synchronized, either because there are delays or failures that might prevent communication from happening, or in the case of concurrent computing, uh, there are phenomena such as cache misses, page faults, uh, which can unexpectedly impose a large uh, delays. Now, what's essential to asynchrony is that a very slow participant is indistinguishable from a participant that, that has failed. And even if the participant hasn't failed, in some circumstances, they may be delayed for so long that it makes no sense to wait. And so you can treat them as if they had uh, failed. Now, the big question of asynchronous computing is whether a given task can be solved by asynchronous computing. And Harry co-authored a major breakthrough that determines which tasks can be solved in such a setting. Uh, yes, a, lo a lot of the early work in distributed computing uh, used graph theory as an underlying formalism uh, quite successfully. But there were several problems that we encountered where graph theory simply wasn't adequate to uh, dealing with the problem. The essential aspect of graph theory is it deals with pairwise interactions. So an edge between two uh, vertices indicates that there's some kind of relationship between two parties. But in some cases, we're interested in relations among multiple parties. Now, it turns out that combinatorial topology has a formalism called simplicial complexes that capture almost exactly what we need to talk about uh, multi-way interactions. A graph is a set of nodes with edges between nodes. Now, a node can be regarded as a zero-dimensional structure, while an edge can be regarded as a one-dimensional structure. Typically, when you are on an edge, you can go left or right, but there are no other dimensions you can go towards. Simplicial complexes allow for higher-dimensional structures. So, for instance, you may have a two-dimensional triangle that connects three edges in between three points. Even weirder, you can have a three-dimensional tetrahedron that connects four triangles in between six edges in between four points. And you can even have four-dimensional simplices or even more generally, n-dimensional simplices. Now, for historical reasons, much of this was unfamiliar to the computer science community. And so the work uh, that uh, my colleagues and I did using combinatorial topology for distributed computing was based on the insight that 
by changing from graph theoretical to simplicial uh, formalisms, we were able to address problems that uh, were not really a good natural fit for, uh, for graph theory. Professor Haley is being modest. His 1999 paper written with Professor Nir Shavit won the prestigious 2004 Gödel Prize along with Michael Sachs and Fotio Zaha Hoglu. And the reason why relating asynchronous computing with simplicial complexes was such a big deal is that... The study of simplicial complexes has a long history. Uh, topologists have been studying this for 100 years. And so there is a, a large collection of very sophisticated uh, theorems and prior results that can be taken out of the box and applied to uh, distributed computing problems. In particular, Halliery and Chavit's main theorem was a characterization of the solvability of a task depending on the topological properties of its corresponding simplicial complex. One of the theoretical abstractions that lies uh, under a lot of synchronization problems is something called a set agreement, where a number of uh, processes need to, uh, in some sense, take their input values and eliminate uh, uh, some of them. Now, attempts to deal with this with graph theory uh, did not uh, work out well because, again, because graph theory is very good at talking about pairwise interactions, but not very good about talking about more complicated uh, interactions. Now, we were able to show that any particular uh, execution of a distributed system in an asynchronous uh, world can be modeled as a family of simplicial complexes. And the topological properties of these complexes, uh, namely whether or not they have holes in higher dimensions, turns out to be exactly what you need to show that problems like uh, set agreement, for example, have, do or do not have uh, solutions. So there's a direct connection between the topological properties of the simplicial complexes and the computational properties of different models of computation. And because these are statements about higher dimensional relations, uh, it's basically not possible to capture these ideas using classical notions of uh, graph theory. And there's a protocol, if and only if, I can take the input complex, uh, drop down to the T-skeleton of the simplex, take a continuous map from that polyhedron to the polyhedron of the output complex in a way that's uh, compatible with the uh, carrier map that defines the, um, the task. If one of us had written, say, the uh, Bitcoin uh, paper in 2008 and submitted it to a, a conference, it probably would not have been accepted because it didn't have any proofs. It uh, was uh, vague about many things.